strange new world has finally graced our screens with the handsome Captain Pike, of course leading the USS Enterprise, but with a new show, we also get new starships. So why don't we take a look at a new starship that appears in the first episode of this new series. That of course being the USS Archer. Welcome to Trek Central, Lords, Ladies and Sovereigns. I'm your host, Lieutenant Adam. Let's get into it. In this starship breakdown, we're going to be taking a look at the USS Archer, the ship captained by Lieutenant Commander Una Chin Riley, and might have more of a history to it than first alluded to. Prepare to dive into the lore, the technical information, the behind the scenes information, all of that good stuff to discover more about this starship class. And before we dive into the video, if you want to keep up to date with all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then of course, make sure you hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central, and you can always follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. And as always, please do let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. Anyway, engage. The USS Archer, NCC-627, was a ship under Starfleet of the United Federation of Planets. It was active at least in the year 2259. The Starship class is not known. However, the ship itself bears a similar configuration to that of the Saladin or the Hermes class starship. The ship consisted of a primary hull of a saucer with a dark hull material, common for Starfleet ships at the time. The saucer was attached to a single underslung nacelle that was connected via a pylon at the rear of the ventral side of the saucer, and this pylon had cutouts within, splitting it into a pair of struts, kind of like the Starship equivalent of torn jeans. The nacelle this pylon attached to was fairly similar to the nacelles used by the Constitution class at the time. The nacelle, however, had its Bussard collector glow white which differs from the orangey-red of the Constitution class at the time. What this might mean isn't really known, but it is an interesting little detail for sure. Perhaps they were the same nacelles and simply mass-produced and used on multiple Starfleet ships. This could well be the case after Starfleet had lost a third of the fleet during the Federation Klingon War 2256 to 2257. If the nacelles were the same as those used by the Constitution class of the 2250s, then the length of those nacelles would have been 153 meters with the ship itself being roughly 200 overall. However, on a key mission to Kylie 279, this ship would only have a crew of three, which might mean it's actually way smaller than believed, operating as a small warp-capable scout shuttle or something else. When the ship is scanned by the Enterprise during this mission to Kylie 279, an interior map of it is shown, which does make it look fairly small. Very few rooms in the primary hull of the ship. The underside of the saucer featured an embedded deflector dish, similar in style to the deflectors seen on the Walker-class starships of the era, which had two prongs on them for some inexplicable reason. As with all Starfleet ships at the time, the USS Archer would come equipped with a Duotronic-based computer system and a conventional faster-than-light drive system. Yep, that's right, there's a ship on screen that doesn't have some contrived way of going faster than warp. Fancy that! And it was powered by matter-antimatter reactions, and of course it had deflector shields. We could also assume that the Archer had a transporter system on board, as, uh, well, how else would the crew of this ship get to the planet's surface with the ship still in orbit? I didn't see any shuttles. What are you talking about? Transporter systems of the time were able to be set on a timer. We've seen that in the animated series episode The Terratin Incident. So we can presume the transporter of the Archer had similar capabilities in order to beam its crew back from their mission at a set time. The armament capabilities of this vessel are unknown and probably limited due to the scale of the thing. Now the Archer probably has some phasers, but whether it comes equipped with photon torpedoes, well, that's unknown. The ship's name is probably taken from the 22nd century human and first captain of the NX-01 Enterprise, Captain Jonathan Archer. It was a greedy little sod if you ask me, he already has a planet named after him. Archer would be the person who helped bring about the Coalition of Planets, which would later evolve into the United Federation of Planets. And of course, he would go on to become president of said United Federation of Planets. Like I said, greedy. This wouldn't be the only ship named after this great man, with the Archer NCC-44278 from Battlegroup Omega, which was a Starfleet battlegroup the USS Enterprise E was meant to rendezvous with until Shinzon and the Scimitar and Star Trek Nemesis intervened. Unfortunately, we would not get to see this USS Archer due to the Enterprise being ambushed in the Basin Rift, which rendered long-range communication impossible. And of course, though it isn't a starship, 
After the recovery of the Federation after the calamitous event of the Burn in the year 3069, the Federation constructed Archer Space Dock in the year 3190, with its function being to upgrade the existing fleet and construct the next generation of Starfleet vessels. Good lord, he's just doing the Grand Slam. Anyway, this space dock was unveiled when Starfleet Academy was reopened in the same year by the president of the Federation, Liara Rilak. So the point I'm getting to here is there's a lot of stuff named after Jonathan Archer. Did you catch that? Good, okay. An interesting thing to note is that in the TOS novel Devil's Bargain, Winona Kirk served on the USS Archer. We know that in at least the year 2233, Winona and George Kirk would both be stationed on the USS Kelvin, which would be the turning point between the Prime Timeline and the Kelvin Timeline. The only other thing we know about the USS Archer in lore, and mentioned briefly earlier, was that it was once under the command of Lieutenant Commander Una Chin Riley, along with two astrophysicists, Lieutenant Ki and Ensign Haddad. They were assigned with making first contact with the planet of Kylie 279, where a warp signature had been detected. The sad news is, this was not a warp-capable ship, but a warp bomb, which the government of Kylie 279 was going to use against its insurrectionist rivals, as you do. This technology, as well as plasma torpedoes, were backward engineered from readings the inhabitants of Kylie 279 were able to take from the battle near Zahia, wherein the USS Discovery, the USS Enterprise, the Kelpians, the Klingons, a whole pile of shuttles, and of course the rogue AI Control had a minor disagreement. Control being a very, very naughty AI and taking control of Starfleet Intelligence Agency Section 31. I think I've done a video about them before. Eh, maybe. Due to the numerous energy signatures of all these vessels being within detectable range of Kylie 279, they were able to create such technology by simply studying them. Due to this, Captain Pike of the USS Enterprise was able to use a loophole in order to circumvent General Order 1, which would go on to be called the Prime Directive, to stop the people of Kylie 279 from using such weaponry against one another. As Starfleet could not say how the inhabitants of the planet got hold of such technology due to information on the Battle of Zaheer being classified, Pike was not court-martialed, but reportedly the Federation Council and the current CNC of Starfleet were not happy. That might just be the lamest slap on the wrist I've ever heard. I only wish Captain Jack was that lenient when I experiment with dark matter and alcohol. As we mentioned before, the Archer seems to be modeled after the Hermes and Saladin classes seen in Beta Cannon. The Saladin class being designed by Franz Joseph for the Starfleet Technical Manual. It was designed with some other Federation starships to more populate Starfleet and give it some other looks than just the Constitution class, which was the only Starfleet ship seen in the original series. The Archer seen in Strange New Worlds is actually a brand new model, but looks to be partly kitbashed from other models such as the Nacelle, looking almost identical to the Nacelle of the Constitution class. Even now, when we're using 3D models in Star Trek shows, we still have to appreciate the time-honored Trek tradition of kit-bashing to make new ships. And that was our look at the USS Archer from the first episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. What did you think about it? Are there any other ships you would like me to break down for you in this show? Whether it be ships from Discovery, like the McGee class, ships from Beta Cannon, like the Lochnar class, or my own personal brainchild, the Relentless class. Uh, actually, no, we probably shouldn't do that one. We'll be here all day. But let us know in the comments below. As always, if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. And to keep up to date with all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, make sure you hit that subscribe button and never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media or join our community Discord server. For now, I've been Lieutenant Adam. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Live long and prosper, my friends.